Hello everyone, and welcome to another look at GOGS, here on a fragment from the Net Slum. Um, if you've been keeping up on the Grumpy Old Guy Gaming channel, you've seen GOGS introduction into the world. You've also seen some really twitchy movement with that left arm there. See, there it goes again. It's just... It's not weird until you realize just how that elbow's gyrating. That's some weird jointing going on there. Anyway, you'd have seen Gogs go through his first couple dungeons, meet up with Bear, BT, Mimiru, and Mia, learn about the bracelet and data drain, and even drain his first data bug, a corrupted monster. That said, for as much progress as Gogs has had, um, looking pretty pitiful as far as the gear goes. We've got a vanilla level 1 weapon, a vanilla level 2 hood, a vanilla level 3 heavy armor, I mean, literally the equipment you start the game with. And that was all well and good to get us to this point, but in that second dungeon, we were basically there for data drain and nothing else. So the first thing I want to address is the number of items we have for trade at this point. We've got a good number of spell scrolls that we're not really using, and some equipment. We've picked up some steel blades, steel cap, a guard cap, and we could go ahead and equip some of this stuff if we think it'll help. Let's go ahead to the gear here. Um, let's take a look at the Nomad's Hood. Steel cap would definitely best it in magical defense and evasion, but would let us down a little physically. Uh, just straight buffs from the guard cap, albeit not a great deal better. Just better evasion physically and magically, everything else stays the same. The Mountain Helm gives us some nice buffs physically, hurts our magical defense a little, but also gets rid of our ability to cast Wrath. And being stranded without a healing spell online is not something I'd be a big fan of, so we're going to skip those Helms entirely. Don't have any armor to switch to. Have a fossil bracer. Let's see how that stacks up with rusted hands. It's actually mostly worse, save for the fact that we could get Gan Rom. But we're not looking at casting too many spells right now, especially not with 12 SP. So we're kind of at an impasse. You may notice that I am actually offline, and one quick way to tell is right there. That is Big, and you may recognize Big from Infection, Mutation, Outbreak, and Quarantine. You can go in just like those games, and go ahead and trade with the different NPCs in the world here. So we're just going to take a look around. There's Anri, who wants Holy Sap and nothing else. We certainly don't have enough to trade her. Here's Benki. Big old heavy axe there. What's up, Benki? Let's see what you got. Got a noble cloak. Uh, not the best for us. Mm, the only thing it's got is an awakening. Kind of striking out so far on the gear. But we're going to keep looking around. We're going to keep talking to people because talking to people is what we do. Alternately, if you were online and somebody else was in a server with you, you could trade with them. They could be your Cossack leader in this specific place. Of course, Cossack leader doesn't have anything we are looking for. There's M78. Uh, nope. Also nothing. Kleama. Kleoma has some ring mail and some grand armor. Hot dog, I do believe we want the grand armor. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we could trade her out of what we have. 
she'd take a mountain helm straight up for it, but she'll take a guard hat straight up for it as well. Almost take a steel cap. Yeah, guard cap for grand armor straight up. We will make that trade just about every day of the week. Guard cap just isn't bringing us much. Anything else? No. Let's try talking to Yuji. Yuji just has a nomad's hood. Let's see what Hirami's got. Uh, nothing too interesting for us. Make one last sweep, see if there's anyone left here we didn't talk to. Did we talk to Heavy? I don't believe so, but nothing of use there. Just take a dip here down the NPC cutscene hallway into this abandoned alleyway next to the waterways. Yeah, and now let's take a look at what we can do with the gear. The Grand Armor is a grand upgrade for us, also giving us a support spell on Afghans, allowing us to up our Earth Element even further. It's gonna hurt our Wood Element a little in the short term, dropping us to three. But far too many pluses for that minus to be a huge factor. Um, still don't like any of our choices for a helm, so we're going to skip that for now. Uh, the Fossil Bracer, just not worth it for the gloves, especially when you're talking about dropping magic attack from a pitiful 2 to a downright non-existent 1. So you could cast a spell, it just wouldn't matter. Now, we will go ahead here and equip two items that I just sort of glossed over at first. Uh, for footwear, we're going to throw a fire lizard on. That's going to up our physical accuracy and evasion, up most of our buffs, even up most of our elements, even buffing our wood element back up to four. Um, it's also going to give us access to another support skill, Aptorv, which is physical accuracy increase. And we'll trade out the Adventurer Sword for Soul Linker, which is going to drastically up our accuracy and attack power. Takes away our Deathbringer attack and adds in two elemental attacks, Gan Drive and Rai Smash. Going to give us access to Aptorv, which is going to up our physical defense and give us Spirit Drain as well. Now you may be wondering, since I said we've only played two very low level areas, where on earth I got those items, and that is a very fair thing to question. Um, to address that properly, I think we would have to go to the next part of the video, so if you'll wait just one moment. And I now welcome you to my sort of cluttered little desktop setup, something I sort of go out of my way to not capture too frequently. That said, please take a moment and admire the beautifully drawn up digital antique world map, gift from the missus last year, so nice of her to draw it for me. Um, you may have noticed in the earlier trades, I went out of my way to avoid picking up any weapons for gogs or footwear. And that's where a little program called the uh, Chucker program comes in, the F Chucker. It was designed by N.C. Dyson, venerable member of the community. And the link to uh, the GitHub page for the Chucker is down below here. And we're going to go ahead and fire that up now. After downloading and extracting, of course, you just go in, and it's an ELF file, so you'll want to run the ELF out of the system file. Got the chucker right there. Okay, it says FC Hucker, but it's 
it's the chocker to me. Because what it does is chalk items. So it's going to allow you to trade between different characters and different slots in your memory cards. You can see all of my characters from my first memory card are in slot 1, and Gog's there in my second card slot. You've got a source file and a destination. So we're going to go ahead and choose Gog's as the destination. I can't remember which of my characters have both of the items. I think Grump O Guy might. So we're going to go from Grumpo Guy to Gogs. Let's go ahead and load it up. And this is going to pop up both of their inventories. As you can see, Grumpo Guy fairly well stocked up. And Gogs literally has everything more or less that he had after the second. Uh, dungeon. I did these uploads sort of out of order, so this will be appearing on the second half while we've already gone through the first half that I'll be recording later. Let's go ahead into the storage. Nothing specific for him there. Taking a look at the equipment, there's the Soul Linker. We want to send that over. That's a heavy blade weapon slightly overpowered. Oh, wow, you could even transfer gold, how about that? Uh, it's slightly overpowered and um, not incredibly broken, but it will give us a fair bit more offensive potency. If you remember that second dungeon, we did barely anything. So it says X to transfer the item. Oh, of course, uh, up, down to select an item, left, right to select an amount, and then X. So I hit right to select one. Gogs received Soul Linker one. Okay. I'm going to go down and give him just one of the Fire Lizards as well. Fire Lizard is a level 20's uh, armor piece, uh, boots that has Aptorv on it, which is Physical Accuracy Up. Those two items will do a world of good. You'll notice I'm intentionally avoiding things like Ice Leg Mail, Spirit Hands, uh, Sprite Hands, the Spirit Halberk, and an Owl Crest. That would do wonders for a level 1 character, and there's nothing against it. If that's how you want to go for it, go for it. But as far as the way we're playing here, we want to enjoy some of the story, we want to make this a bit of a challenge, we just kind of would like a leg up on that challenge, and to do more at the early levels than hope our NPCs can carry the day. So these two items in particular will help us out there. Uh, with that done, it says start to save changes and return. Or you could hit the select button if you weren't happy with those and discard the changes. So yeah, just that quick, everything is saved, and now if we look in GOG's um, inventory and say we wanted to trade back, go ahead, pull up the equipment, and you'll see a soul linker and a fire lizard already there going to go ahead back out. That will do it for this portion of the video. Once again, I do thank you for checking this out and for visiting a fragment from the net slum. Hopefully this has helped out explaining a bit more as to the behind the scenes of building a character at lower levels, uh, saving up item economy, and the various ways you can improve your armor, be that through trading with NPCs offline, trading with various other players who play the game online, or even using a program like this in the event you have multiple characters going, so that you're not absolutely stuck with one loaded character with all the good stuff. You could sort of share the wealth. Alternately, if you don't have access to the Chucker program or don't really want to mess with it, it is entirely possible to do this 
just by asking someone to come online and sort of hold the item for you. A little bit of the honor system needs to be extended there, as it's entirely possible the person could just log out with your stuff as soon as you go to switch characters. But, by and large, the Fragment community, I can say, is a very honorable one. It's not really something I would worry about too much. Um, hope you're all doing well, whatever you're getting into out there, and we will see you around.